This is the Sales Bible Podcast, episode 237, How to Scale Sales with a Customer Service Mindset, an interview with Sean Tierney. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non sellers. And now, your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, Sales Babblers. This is Pat Helmers. And it's no secret that I love WordPress. SalesBabble.com is a WordPress site. What's cool about it is, even though I'm no web developer, it allows me to like manage the site. And I've built a few, but I wouldn't call myself a, a website builder. This is one reason why I invited our guest today. His name's Sean Tierney. He's the director of sales at Pagely. Pagely runs managed WordPress sites, but not for like the average mom and pop company. No, they do it for the Fortune 500. Companies like Disney. Sean grew his sales team from only him. He was the sales and marketing team. He grew that. He was able to scale up that sales team. He did it by addressing the challenges as they arise. He didn't overly automate from the get-go. He did it in an orderly manner. Sean shares his seven key steps to scale up a sales organization. Whether or not you're a sales manager, you're going to find a lot of insight in how startups go from small to big. It may even give you some thoughts on how your company got the way it is now. So, with no further ado, let's get to it. Welcome, Sean. You ready to babble? Yeah, let's do it. Sean, uh, Katie reached out to you. You're one of your colleagues. Katie reached out to me, and she was telling me about uh, Pagely the processes that you guys were using to uh, scale up your business. It's a software business. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you and I were talking, and uh, you've got a seven-step process for this, right? We do, yeah. We have basically a framework that we kind of developed in the course of of going through this over the last three years. And so I think, yeah, that's the context. I think she reached out, and uh, yeah. So what's your role at Pagely? Yeah, so I'm the director of sales. (laughs) I I run the sales organization. (laughs) But for Air, I, I know you and I were talking before. You're an Arizona guy. You're not in Arizona today, are you? No, no. I now live in Lisbon. Um, I had a like Pagely is an entirely remote, distributed company, and so for the past two years, I've actually been traveling all over the world. I went to city uh, 61 cities, uh, 18 countries, and four continents over the last two years, and finally settled in Lisbon, Portugal. Portugal is supposed to be lovely. I had some friends there just uh, six months ago. They said had nothing but good things to say. It's a great city. But we're not here to talk about travel. Although we could. I, it's one of my favorite topics. Um, let's, let's talk about the challenge of growing a sales organization. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, so let me give you some context just so people understand what Pagely is. Uh, we're a managed WordPress hosting provider. Um, so basically, we help companies scale their WordPress. Um, they host with us. We were actually the very first people doing this um, 10 years ago, and it's become quite a crowded space, but we've been fortunate to really stay at that focus at that top end of the market. So uh, some of the world's largest brands like Disney and Comcast and Univision, Time Inc., et cetera, um, or Meredith now, uh, all those companies use our platform and team to like offload all the headaches associated with maintaining their WordPress sites. So... Uh, I started with Pagely three years ago. Uh, I was employee number eight and uh, basically had the role of director of sales and marketing at that point. I was, But that fancy title was basically just me doing all the sales and all the marketing. Uh, so we've since grown quite a bit. We're 38 employees now, three years later. Um, and I think what would be most useful, or I'm hoping this will be useful for your listeners, is to just talk about those challenges as you scale a sales organization, You know what we encountered and what we did as a result. Um, and I think by couching it in the way that I, I'm going to, I, I hope that I, I recognize that everyone has a unique set of challenges, right? Like my challenges are not necessarily going to be your challenges, but I think by giving you just the line of thinking and our philosophy with each one of these things, um, hopefully this, this will be applicable. You can use some of the same ideas uh, to apply towards whatever your unique challenges are. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a really relevant product because, uh, I mean, topic. Because that's that's the boat that I, I've lived in in the past when I was working at Common Goal as a startup. I mean, I was sales. I was marketing. And over time, mm-hmm. slowly had to build that all out. 
And uh, I think I think there's a lot of managers, sales managers out there would find a lot of value in this. And a lot of salespeople, it would actually give them some context of how their organization used to look like once upon a time. Yeah, I, I think it's always helpful to understand, even if your role is more niche and you're, you know, you're performing like a in the trenches, talking to customers, just a sales role. It's helpful to understand the larger contact. So, uh, yeah, I, I think this could be very useful for folks. All right. So let's get to it. Yeah. Okay. So let me just give kind of the high level. I think the, the sales philosophy underpins everything. And ours is very simple. Uh, we say that sales is just customer service before they're a customer. Uh, if you start with that in mind, I think pretty much everything we do emerges from that you know, axiom. Uh, so customer service before they're a customer. Let me give you now, uh, I'll just basically roll it back to day one when I started with Pagely and take you through kind of the growth plateaus and the challenges. So uh, early on, I get there and day one, when you start with a company, you have you, you don't know where the skeletons are buried, right? You, you don't know the sales <laughs> process. <laughs> you, you don't know what's what. Um, so part of, the, part of the trick is really to figure out what you know and what you don't know you don't know. So uh, I like to say, so step one of our framework is map out the flows. Uh, we want to understand really the current reality. And I do this, and, and, and again, if you're already in a role where you think this isn't relevant and you understand things, I challenge you to still go through this exercise because I think it's helpful and seeing things fresh and doing these two exercises I'm going to give you, uh, I think can actually yield some really interesting insights. So map out the flows. What I mean by that is there's two maps that I like to do. Um, I like to understand where information is, like how information is moving through the system, right? So uh, where does data live? How is it getting there? What are the forms on your sites? Uh, what systems does that flow into and what's being done with that data? That's one map. Um, and however you need to draw that, like if, if you want to see how I did it, you can actually Google uh, Pagely sales system. And there's a presentation. It's the one that I just did recently here in Lisbon. Uh, you can kind of follow along in a slide deck there. But map that out and understand how the data moves through the current system. And I think the other map that's useful to do is really in understanding the buyer journey, uh, or I call it like life cycle marketing process. That's an Infusionsoft term. But same thing, buyer journey. How do people go from you know not knowing about your service to landing on your website, to becoming a lead, to engaging with your sales team, and now uh, you know having that back and forth nurturing process and closing the deal. And by the way, it doesn't end there. Once they're a customer, now how do we keep moving them through that continuum of engagement and you know, e extract referrals, get more expansion revenue, get upsells, cross-sells, et cetera? How do you move them down that pipeline to ultimately being a raving fan, right? So map out those two things and start there. I think those, those are very useful exercises to do uh, early on. Uh, make sense? It does. And in fact, I, re I remember, actually, we didn't have any of these. <laughs> We started. Yeah. We started building these. Oh my goodness, we have a customer. Oh, I guess I need to have an order form. Huh. Oh, I guess I need a process for putting them. I guess I need a CRM. I guess I. And you start thinking, right? You start thinking about this because other places you work already have this set up. In this case, yeah, you have nothing. It's it's a green field. That's correct. But that's the best way to do it is to as let empirical demand dictate what you need to do instead of trying to cast your own idea of what you think you're going to need ahead of time. It, it's actually the right way to do it the way that you did it and just let demand dictate what you do. Right. I, I, I like that. Be, I, I like what you're saying is as, a, as opposed to like, let's just build something that's going to be big. Let's just work on the problems as they come one by one and worry about big stuff later down, let, down, down the road, kick that can down the road. That's exactly right. Yeah, they call it the problem of pre-optimization. You don't want to pre-optimize. You want to just basically be so fortunate as to have the problem of getting too many orders where you need an order form. I like that. Problem of pre-optimization. Yeah, that's, a, that's a sin you see all the time. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> cool. what's, what's, what's the next step? Sure. So the next step is track metrics and KPIs. Um, so you need to... So what, why don't you tell everybody what's a KPI? Sure. A key performance indicator is a KPI, um, a metric. So, so there is a distinction. I see these terms used interchangeably uh, to clarify what those are. Metrics are, uh, or at least this is how I think of it. Metrics are tactical. KPIs are strategic. Uh, so metric, 
Nice. Metrics are, yeah, metrics are those uh, events that you can record, things like page views on a website, time on site, uh, number of leads generated, things like that. Um, KPIs are strategic units of measurement that have business value. So I think of things like uh, MRR, monthly recurring revenue, uh, ARR, annual recurring revenue. You know, what are the sales cycle times? What are like the needles that you're trying to move for your business? Those are KPIs. Like one of my favorite KPIs is meeting scheduled. Mm -hmm. So if you actually, you're you're walking through one of your sales reps, uh, you know, it's nice how how many calls you've made or how many, you know, you know, how many emails you sent out. But what's really important to me is like, how many have you scheduled? You know, you're getting one every two days, you're getting one a day, because that's actually the likelihood if you can get somebody to actually show up. And the second one is like number of meetings held because <laughs> people that's don't right. show up because that really tells you we're, we're really talking with qualified prospects. Yep, that's exactly right. We we track those weekly, actually. So we yeah, we right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and the, the one that I heard I loved uh, a guy owns a restaurant and his sole metric that he cares about is how long is the line on a Saturday night? Like that's his, that's his metric. It, everything rolls up to that. And if he knows, if he comes and he sees that there's a huge line, then we're doing it, like mostly things right. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Yeah. So, um, well, and just to round off that, so the, the metrics there, like just have a spreadsheet, do it is, uh, you know, you don't need anything fancy, but just track the ones that truly matter and start with just a few. Don't, you know, overdo it and try to track everything. Uh, but you got to establish, you know, what are we trying to do here? What are we trying to accomplish? And that helps with alignment, helps you get everything, you know, everyone working, pulling in the same direction. So, okay. So next one is establish a process. And so, and by this, I mean, you've got to use something. If you're not using a CRM right now, uh, you, you know, you really need at least something like a Kanban style or a spreadsheet or, you know, just don't drive everything out of your inbox. You, you need process and structure. And don't go overboard, but have some kind of system that you use for responding to people. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> you can't do this. There's no way you're going to remember to follow up if you're putting in your email. you got to, at the very least, there's a lot of, and there's a lot of CRMs out there that are not that, um, they don't have to be that weighty and hefty. You don't have to move and go with Salesforce from the get-go. You can start with something smaller and then it's exported all into Salesforce someday when you get bigger. Yeah, there's a, a bajillion options out there for CRM. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of a fan of Active Campaign, and I've used a lot of them. I'm an, uh, I'm an Active Campaign customer. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> they're right here in Chicago. Nice. Yeah, I love that company. They're yeah. really good. So, okay, so that's the process. Assuming you get a CRM in place, and you now actually have you know a pipeline and a method for for following up and making sure nothing falls through the cracks. The next thing, uh, what I call flintstoning it. So uh, we chatted briefly before we started recording, like this idea of Flintstoning, let me explain it. It's, you know, that old Fred Flintstone mobile where, uh, you know, it's, it's human powered. There's feet under the, under the hood. It's not really an engine. And again, this is the idea of don't pre-optimize. Don't try to automate everything out of the gate. Do things decidedly manually to start because then that will help you figure out what you should automate down the road. So uh, so the example here, like I used a set of tools early on. Uh, I used Boomerang uh, for, you know, this was a plugin for Gmail that yep. helped me make sure that no leads fell through the cracks and I could follow up effectively. Um, Calendly for scheduling was the tool that I used there, but there's a ton of different scheduling tools. Um, I used a, a what's called a text expander. I found myself constantly writing, you know, the same blurbs of text to people when I was uh, qualifying leads. And so I, I was able to put those into uh, what's called a text expander. Typinator was the specific tool in Mac. Uh, but this allows you to basically a couple keystrokes and it expands it to, you know, an entire paragraph of text. So you don't have to write that every time. Uh, so things like this, little tools that help you stay manual, not like try to have a heavyweight automation, but get things done quicker uh, and figure out what is possible to automate down the road. Well, I love it. Because I, I think sometimes people waste way too I see this all the time, Sean. I see people wasting a lot of time trying to automate something that really doesn't, they're only doing 10 times a week. You know, when, you, yeah. when you're doing hundreds of times a week, then it's time to like move to a tool. But like simple That's tools exactly. like you have. Yeah, I, I use Boomerang. I use, uh, I use uh, you, you can book me dot, dot me um, for, 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 for my 
calendars, and that's and that's it's more than adequate. Actually, I use Active Campaign very simply. You know, I I build campaigns and I just send out emails, and I've done some yep. programming on it. But I tell you what, it's actually good enough for me for sales babble. Yeah. Yeah, I, I avoid the fixation on the shiny new object like, ooh, I need tools. I need like a heavyweight ob- automation. I mean, that's a rabbit hole you can go down and diminishing returns there. You, it's really more about figuring out, staying nimble, being just very hands on in the early stages to figure out what truly needs to be automated. And then you can go down that rabbit hole later. Cool. Cool. All right. So that was number four. Number five, uh, delegate. Right. So when I started for Pagely, I was literally the only salesperson and the only marketer. Uh, we've since hired a whole marketing department and I have a whole sales team under me. Uh, but early on, the, the, and I learned this from the Kauffman Foundation course that I went through way back in the day. Um, it's a good idea to, to map out your org chart, even if you're like a solo founder or like a very small team, map out an org chart of all the roles that you're performing and then acknowledge, OK, I'm acting as you know, the the VP of sales right now, I'm acting as an SDR, I'm acting as an account exec, I'm acting as the onboarding person, recognize what you're doing in that org chart, and log mentally, okay, this role is really taking all my time right now. Uh, in, in my case, I found that as the SDR role, that was the thing that was occupying like 90% of my time, and was really, it was bottlenecking me from doing the more strategic things that I needed to do. Um, so, Mapping out that org chart, uh, in our case, I was able to make a knowledge base that offloaded all that kind of tribal knowledge I had uh, that only I had at that time. And I used an intern, you know, three interns to help, to help me build up this knowledge base. They actually went and read my emails, read my chats. Uh, we had been recording the calls that I did. Uh, so I had one intern actually listen to all the calls and extract all that to Q&A and put it in that knowledge base. And that freed me up to be able to then go be more of the strategic director of sales instead of the SDR at that point. That makes t- just a ton of sense. That was your biggest pain. That was your biggest challenge. And it's what you focused on. Yep. Yeah. So delegate your way out of the stuff that consumes all your time. And, you know, just again, think of that org chart. Think of cleaving off different roles on that org chart that are consuming the most time. And so in moving constantly up stack to do more strategic stuff. Uh, Okay, so that's delegation. Uh, automation would be number six. And let me tell you what we did there. So uh, once you have a team in place, we now have an SDR and an AE and an onboarding person, et cetera. Um, those folks are eventually going to get overloaded. And so you can only hire so much. At some point, you really need to focus on the efficiency of the people that you have. And so the way to achieve that is through automation. And so you're a fellow user of Active Campaign. I'm a huge fan of that product because it allows me to think okay, what is the bottleneck for my SDR? What is the bottleneck for my AE? Uh, And then go and build a set of scaffolding for that person that does a lot of the tedious stuff that, you know, is grinding them up. And so this is just a perpetual game of, you know, making everything more efficient for each person on the team. Uh, And I don't think probably on this call we have the the time to go through, (laughs) you know, each of of what's involved there, but this is just a little teaser. Um, Yeah. Again, for the people listening, if you want more in-depth, I did do a talk uh, recently in Lisbon where you know there's a whole Prezi slide deck for it. Uh, if you Google Pagely sales system, you'll find that talk, and it kind of drills into more of, of exactly how we did all this stuff. All right. I think we're down to the last one, right? Number seven? Last one. Yeah, number seven. Um, okay, so this is called Scaling Personal Attention. Um, this is basically a, a philosophy of how to automate things. So it's not necessarily mutually exclusive from automation, um, but it is a whole, it's like an advanced level of automation. Um, this is something I learned from a guy named Jermaine Grigg, uh, who is an info marketer. So hopefully like that was really the, the value of me being in Infusionsoft land was just meeting this guy and learning his system. Uh, Infusionsoft, I could care less about. I'm actually not a fan of that product anymore. Uh, but scaling personal attention, this is a very powerful concept. And think of this like uh, the analogy here is like, I remember that movie Aliens with Sigourney Weaver when she's in that exoskeleton suit, right? It's that thing that is. It, <laughs> I did it's remember like a, that. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's like it allows you, you're, you're like making small movements, but having these wide sweeping motions of this machine. So that's how I think about like 
how do you create highly personalized and powerful experiences at scale? Uh, you know, but with that boutique feel of like you're 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 having this one-on-one -on -one interaction, and yet it's possible to do this for thousands of customers simultaneously. Um, and the best example of this for the people listening, um, you can just go to our website, go to pagely.com/explore. Um, this is something we put together. This is a good example of uh, one way to do this. Uh, but I recently took our whole uh, sales process, our consultative sale uh, that occurs early on, and turned it into a series of choose your own adventure videos. So people can now interact with Matt, our lead sales guy, and have the feel of as if they're actually having a conversation with him. And you really have to just do it to understand how powerful this is. Uh, but pagely.com slash explore would be uh, Go, go check it out and experience it for yourself. So if you could give our listeners, Sean, one piece of advice they could go and take action on in the context yeah. of here, of the scaling, what would, it, what, what, what would that be? Um, well, I, I guess it really depends on where they're at in the process. Um, all of these things have different value based on where you are. To me, I think having the system, you know, just having some – methodology to, by which you're responding to things is the most crucial. Uh, I forget who said it, but someone had a quote. It says, if you can't explain what you're doing as a process, then you don't know what you're doing. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of truth in that. Like a lot of people will just kind of shoot from the hip and they may be very good salespeople, but I challenge you to take a step back and actually look at what you're doing and try to map it out, draw a decision tree and say, these are the questions that I ask and these are the, the gating factors and why I steer them this way or that way. And really try to map out your sales process, and you'll understand it at a really different level if you do that. I love it. That's really right. How can people find you, Sean? And how can people find Pagely? Sure. Uh, Pagely is just uh, Pagely, like page, like a page of paper, I guess. Spell <laughs> it. Page. <laughs> P a g e l y dot com. Yep, uh, is the company website. Uh, I'm scrolling on Dubs uh, at a, on almost every form of social media. Also scrolling on Dubs dot com is where I blog. Uh, but you can find yeah, find the company at Pagely. Find myself just by typing in scrolling on Dubs. D u b s. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, it's. Yeah. It, that that's like a whole podcast episode in itself. <laughs> but I'm thinking like WWW, right? W -W -W? Uh, no. Okay, no, never, uh, mind. <laughs> never, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with that. Ah, never, mind. never mind. Go to the very first blog post on my blog and there's an explanation. Oh, yeah. And one other thing. You said you had a podcast we were chatting before. I do, yeah. I host a podcast. Uh, it's called Nomad Podcast. So nomadpodcast.com. Um, I interview people, you know, having traveled the world for the past two years and adopted this nomadic lifestyle. Um, it's just been such a transformative thing for me. So I actually now interview uh, other nomads and program founders and product founders and domain experts, uh, anything that helps people make this transition to this lifestyle, uh, you know, of the roving digital nomad. It's great. One of my favorite topics. <laughs> my favorite topics because i got to do that a couple of years ago and uh yeah well an adventure yeah. sean no yeah thank you very much for visiting us here in sales babble uh, it's, this has been a great this has been a great talk yeah man it's been a pleasure thanks for having me what sean was talking about is similar to what i experienced when i was a common goal i started out i was the only sales professional and we went from zero to a couple dozen with inside sales people outside sales people you know account reps sdrs marketing everything you need to run a large enterprise. So it really struck home what he's talking about because that's the same way that I kind of approached it. I remember I was sending like emails to uh, people and I was constantly typing them up and I found them reusing the same emails over and over. So I was copying, pasting them from a notepad and eventually we just automated the whole thing in an email tool. Um, but it wasn't until I knew what exactly to do did it make sense that it was time to automate. So I took up Sean and I went and looked at his videos online and you can see how he's almost like automated the sales process, but it comes from hours and hours of sales calls and experience answering questions. He's got these videos that say, maybe you're thinking of this, or maybe you have this question. And then he went and then they go and they answer them. And uh, it's kind of cool to see it like all automated like that. Um, so if, if, you, if you go to the show notes at uh, www.salesbabble.com, you can find all the links that Sean mentioned and how to connect with Pagely and connect with him. If you got a question, you got a comment about this episode, 
don't hesitate to reach out to me. Go to salesbabble.com. Go to the main page. You can click the Babble Me button. I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear what you're thinking about this episode and any other episode that we've talked about in the past. That's all I got for this week, guys and gals. That's all I got. (laughs) So until next week, take care and have a highly successful and a profitable selling day. Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble Podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com. Thank you.